Um, so the, today's talk will be about MongoDB and MySQL and JSON and document store perspective. Uh, I will be comparing those two and, and focusing on uh, how to deal with uh, uh, JSON. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Alexander Rubin. I'm a principal architect at uh, Percona. And uh, my background is MySQL. I have been doing uh, MySQL consulting for more than 10 years. Started with MySQL AB, the company behind MySQL, uh, which was acquired by Sun and then acquired by Oracle. Uh, I joined Percona in 2013 and uh, recently I started doing and uh, working more there with uh, MongoDB. Um, so JSON is nowadays a de facto standard for uh, data exchange. And uh, your API is probably using JSON already. Anyone who are not using JSON at all in exchanging the data, anyone in this room? Uh, I don't think so. So in the old days, um, I remember working with uh, PHP uh, serial and serializable, um, and that was a pain. So now, nowadays, JSON is uh, standard. And uh, developers love JSON because it's much easier to uh, correlate and uh, basically store the objects in JSON. And um, another obvious advantage of JSON is flexible schema. Uh, I will talk a little bit about Internet of Things and why it's more beneficial to use JSON in those type of applications. Well, this is how we do that in MySQL, and this is how we do that in MongoDB. Uh, nothing new here, and uh, with a MongoDB, there's no schema for se. In MySQL, we have to create a table. Um, in uh, MongoDB, we just insert, and whatever we insert will be accepted uh, by MongoDB as long as uh, it's valid JSON. So how many of you are using MySQL and MongoDB at the same time. All right, and not using MySQL at all. All right, so you guys probably uh, should have some uh, MySQL uh, experience. Who are not using Mongo? Not, not using Mongo, not using Mongo, okay. All right, so, sounds good. So um, let's start with this simple example. This is actually the real sensor that I have built myself. My goal was to measure the sunlight on my backyard because my wife asked me, Where's, where do we uh, plant the peach tree? She wanted to plant the peach tree. And then when we came to, uh, it was completely new to me. I'm a city boy, right? So I don't know how to garden and plant things. When we came to the store, um, we were told, well, how many sunlight do you have on the backyard? And I said, I have no idea how to measure that. And then I built a sensor to uh, solve this specific issue that I have, how to measure the sunlight. Now, with a sensor, it was actually very easy to build. Now, with a sensor, I obviously wanted to analyze this data, and I configured the sensor to send this uh, information as a JSON format uh, and uh, was uh, storing it. Now, when, I, when the sensor had been evolved, I added some additional, with this device, I would say, has been evolved, I added some additional sensors. In addition to the sunlight, I also wanted to measure the temperature and humidity and in the future, some soil level and stuff like that. So, Let's say that, again, my background is MySQL, so uh, the um, first thing I did is I created a table, a um, standard MySQL table where I have a timestamp and uh, humidity as a field and uh, sunlight as a field and stuff like that. So I parsed the JSON and then uh, converted it into uh, the actual fields in MySQL. And that worked, but then after a, some period of time, you need to add a new metric. 
So you were, I was collecting the sunlight first, then I needed to add the humidity. So what you have to do is you have to alter the table uh, in MySQL and add an additional field. Uh, that be, can be a challenging by itself. Alter table in MySQL is slow, uh, may lock the table, and also what to do with the old data. You store it as a null or you backfill it with something. So uh, in JSON format, it's much easier to deal with uh, because you just add a new metric and you don't have to worry uh, about. Now, how to deal with that in MySQL? So in MongoDB, it's straightforward, right? So in MongoDB, it's just a JSON as a, a native format, but what about MySQL? So MySQL 5.7 introduced the support of the JSON data type as well as the, the document store. So uh, basically what you can do is you can create, you can add additional field or you can create a separate table and uh, declare your data as JSON. Now this JSON will be parsed and stored as a binary. Um, and then uh, on top of that, you can use a syntax, a MySQL syntax similar to what you have in other programming languages. And you can actually reference the, any feature of the JSON inside of your SQL. Uh, on top of that, uh, okay, so uh, let's start with this. If you do this just by itself, then a MySQL will not use any index because it doesn't know how to index that. Uh, same as in Mongo, we can create an external indexes. Now the challenge though is that MySQL cannot distinguish and cannot reference directly the part of your JSON as a field. MySQL can only create an index on a, on a field. So what we can do, and this is another feature of MySQL 5.7, is called generated column. So what you can do is you can uh, specify whatever uh, feature inside of the JSON and create a generated column on top of that. Then when you have that, that will be referenced as a normal MySQL field, and then you can create an index. Now, the, the great thing about this is this is actually, this is virtual. So this column will not be stored. So it will not be duplicated in uh, MySQL table. But the index will be built and the index will be stored. So you don't necessarily incur some additional storage overhead, but at the same time, you will be able to take advantage uh, of the index. So if we run our test again with the explain plan, and this is MySQL explain plan, we will see that MySQL is actually taking advantage of this uh, data type field, and uh, we'll, uh, obviously this will be much faster. Uh, now, why we are doing this? Why, uh, the, the question here is, why do we want to store the JSON in MySQL? Well, uh, using JSON will allow us to have the flexible schema and at the same time will give you the power of MySQL. So let's say that we want to join something with the other data that already exists in MySQL. So we can uh, introduce some external feed, store it as a JSON instead of parsing it and putting it into, into MySQL table, and then join it and enrich it with uh, some other stuff that is stored in MySQL. Another interesting uh, feature of MySQL 5.7 related to the JSON is a MySQL shell and document store. So MySQL 5.7 is closer to Mongo than you think. Uh, you can use the MySQL shell and actually use the JavaScript to uh, communicate with the MySQL. 
You can also use uh, the similar constructs that you have uh, used in MongoDB. Um, basically, you can just do get schema and do get collections, and then uh, finally you can use the db add, for example, to add some stuff, or db find to search. So that will make MySQL much closer to uh, MongoDB. Um, the, uh, again, this is pretty um, short presentation. Uh, and um, as a conclusion, um, what I want to point out is uh, MongoDB vs MySQL for storing the JSON. Uh, MongoDB probably stores much more efficient. It's using the BSON format. MySQL is just using parsed uh, MySQL. Uh, MongoDB uh, have much better compression nowadays with a wide tiger storage engine. Uh, MongoDB, uh, MySQL has InnoDB, which allow you to do the compression, but it's much less efficient. Um, and then um, the bottom line is MongoDB is really great if everything that you have is JSON and uh, you just need to uh, use it purely in uh, no SQL mode. And MySQL is great for mixing and matching those two worlds, uh, JSON storage and MySQL. I think that's, that's it. So I will be happy to answer any questions and we can further discuss for the remaining of the time. All right, any questions? Yes. Right, so if we, uh, that depends upon compression vs no compression. That's the main difference. So the um, MySQL doesn't compress by itself. It relies on the storage engine compression. Uh, so uh, same as, actually same as in MongoDB, right? So it relies on the storage engine. But if we will compare the White Tiger storage engine, which already have the compression, and MySQL with InnoDB, which doesn't have a compression, we can see like four, five X uh, more, 10 X more, just a typical compression ratio. Yes? In MongoDB, the developer needs to sort of create their own schema on the fly, you know, add new columns. Mm -hmm. Right. In the MySQL version, it would still be part of a, like almost like a DBA task where you just need to create structures. It's a little bit more, the schema is more, I mean, I'm a DBA, so I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the schema is more fixed than, than in the MySQL. Correct. If we are not talking about the JSON store, if we are not talking about uh, storing JSON inside of the MySQL, then uh, it's definitely true. In MongoDB, you just insert whatever you have. You don't need to worry about the schema. You don't even create a schema. Uh, in MySQL, uh, by default, if you're using like a normal fields, you have to uh, create a new field. But in MySQL, and this is what I was uh, talking about here, you can uh, create just a simple table which will have a primary key in JSON. So, and then you can communicate with the MySQL on just throwing in uh, the data into this JSON. Yes? Uh, right, so this, um, I don't remember from top of my head. Uh, there are two limitations that will incur here. So the first limitation is uh, the MySQL blob size. So the JSON is uh, matched to uh, the blob size. Uh, and uh, the second limitation is max allowed packet. Uh, and this is the max allowed packet is configurable. It's on the client. It's basically when you insert something into MySQL, whatever it is, JSON or non-JSON, uh, it will be restricting you from uh, uh, inserting too large data. Uh, 
All right. Any other questions? No? Ah, yes. Uh, the MySQL shell, ah, this is, uh, this is a very good question. I forgot to mention that. So behind the, ski, uh, behind the scenes, what will happen is the MySQL is basically a, a translator. Uh, it will translate those commands that you do like this or anything else to the SQL statements. So uh, you communicate with MySQL shell will allow you different modes. You can uh, use the JavaScript mode, or you can use SQL mode inside of the MySQL shell. But both modes will, what they will do is, they're just interfaces, APIs to MySQL server. And they will translate whatever uh, you have actually entered there to the SQL statements. So if you do db add, for example, it will be translated to insert into values and into this JSON field. All right, any other questions? All right, yeah. Right, it's much better to store it as a JSON type in MySQL. And the reason for that is, first of all, uh, when you do this, you can reference the JSON features like this. Where's my pointer? Like this, and this is be much harder to do uh, if you just store it as a text field or block field. The second thing is that it will be stored more efficiently because it's parsed. And the search on unindexed JSON will even be faster. But the best thing is that if you use the JSON format is that you can create an index. You can extract and create a virtual column, a uh, generated column and create an index on top of that. So you, your queries you don't even need to change your queries. You don't even need to reference the field. You use the original query, and they will still be able to understand uh, that this is using the uh, index. So you insert it, will be Correct. Correct. Uh, the no. inserting will be a little bit faster, but you're trading the insert to the select uh, speed. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right, it doesn't matter. Correct, it will be sent as a stream to your application. So the application will, uh, it's the same as uh, other JSON stores like MongoDB, right? So you will get the JSON as a, as a packet back to the application. All right, any other questions? Well, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm.